Dr. Alistair C. Walker was taken to his heavenly home by the Lord Jesus Christ after a lifetime of service to him on Monday, May 4, 2020. Due to the coronavirus, there was no public memorial service. But today, on the anniversary of his homegoing, the people he and his family had chosen to participate in that service share their thoughts and their hearts about this humble servant of God. Ah, Dr. Alistair Walker. I can just see him now seated at the feast table of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, I'm standing here in this beautiful pulpit where my dear friend and brother, precious man, stood for some 24 years proclaiming the joy of the gospel message. I've told people countless numbers of times that I don't believe that any single man could have been more privileged to follow in the footsteps of a greater, more wonderful, loving man than Dr. Alistair Walker. Oh, I just love him. I miss him so much. I see and feel his presence. You know, from the day I arrived here in 1993, this precious man reached out his arms and he loved me as a son. He taught me as a father. He showed me. He stood with me and he prayed for me. So many weeks my telephone would ring. In fact, I can reach into my pocket right now because I've still got the final time he called me just shortly before he went to heaven. And I just can't take it out of my telephone. It was just so precious, so affirming, so encouraging. You know, we are the fellowship of encouragement at First Baptist. We, we have the encouraging word, and we get it. It's about the word of God and about Jesus. But it comes from the heart of a man like Dr. Alistair Walker and so many people friends, family members, and loved ones, even in our own congregation. No wonder this church is so loving and so relational, having been led by a man like Dr. Alistair Walker. And I arrived, this young man, just 40 years of age, and there he was, and he never left. He did it right. He stepped up. He didn't step aside. He didn't step down. He stepped up, and he became such a mentor to me, such a friend. Countless numbers of times, he would, he would come over to the church, and, and, and he would sit in that same blue chair that still is in our pastor's office. It was always our place, and he would reminisce and throw his head back, and oh, he would laugh, and we would laugh and he would encourage, and he would point in the right direction, and then he would pray for me. I loved Dr. Walker. I just loved his effervescent spirit, his determination to please the Lord Jesus, his walk personally with him, the way he handled and treated others, the pathway that he pointed to, and the way he had traveled. And I will forever give God thanks for Brother Alistair, as I called him so affectionately. Hello, Brother Alistair. How are you? And he would look at me and he'd say, Don. And two of us would sit down and then he would teach me about life. He would show me the nuances of being pastor of a wonderful, wonderful congregation of people. He taught me how to conduct myself how to walk the walk and not just talk the talk. So I stand in this pulpit today paying tribute, thanking God for him. And I know that my life has been so much the better. And now that I look back in the rearview mirror, I pray that somehow my life would be a reflection of the life that he passed on to me so that those who come behind me would find me faithful. Well done, Brother Alistair. Well done. Sure miss you. Sure miss those calls and 
Sure, seeing you out there, just love you so much. God bless you, sir. Thank you for your faithful witness. You're in the presence of the Lord Jesus. And because I too know Jesus as my personal Savior, Brother Alistair, I will see you again, all because of Jesus. Hello, I'm Steve Skinner, the Minister of Music here at First Baptist Church, Spartanburg, South Carolina. And it's been my joy and honor and privilege of serving here in that capacity since 1990. I mean, that kind of takes my breath away to say that. Going on 31 years. And as I think back, uh, it's almost like yesterday, literally, that I was at home on a lunch break uh, while I was teaching there on the faculty of New Orleans uh, Baptist Theological Seminary. I received a phone call and uh, this very beautiful, distinguished voice was on the, on the other line. I remember picking up the phone. I heard, hello, this is Alistair Walker. Uh, he doesn't sound that way. But anyway, it was just this wonderful accent that I heard there. And I, I remember just the Spirit of God came over my heart and over that place. And it was just instantaneous that, that God was up to something. And I, I felt convinced in a matter of minutes that he was moving our family to Spartanburg. It, it was really overwhelming. I remember even in the middle of the phone call, I cupped my hand over the receiver and hollered down the hall to Gay, my wife. I said, hey baby, we're moving to Spartanburg. And she said, where's that? And I said, somewhere in South Carolina. Well, the rest is history. And I, I remember looking back to those first three years here between 1990 and 93, where I was privileged to serve under the leadership of Dr. Walker. I learned so much. He was such a godly mentor and leader in my life. And I'll forever be grateful for the role that he played uh, in the Lord bringing us here to First Baptist Spartanburg. And I just want to thank him for what that has meant to me. And I love him dearly and forever will. I, I was thinking back, there was a, a partnership that, that he and my predecessor had, uh, Ronald Wells. And for over two decades, they served this church so faithfully here. And, and you know, thinking of that partnership, it makes me think of my own partnership with our current pastor. You know him as Pastor Don, Dr. Wilton. He was the first person that I told what was happening back in 1990. He lived right across the street there in New Orleans on the, the, the campus there of that seminary. And we went and shared the news with him. Dr. Don and, and Karen, they were just dear friends. And to this day, obviously still very much our, our closest friends. And so we shared that news, not knowing what God was up to. Because after uh, Alistair announced his retirement, in 1993, in the Lord's perfect will, Dr. Wilton became our pastor and has been now going on 28 years. We've had a wonderful partnership here at First Baptist. As I look back to that other partnership that I was thinking about of Ronald Wells and Alistair that began in the late 1960s, those two men served this church and this fellowship so faithfully down through the years. And still to this day, the memories are just so prevalent amongst many in this church. I, I felt like it would be just the right thing to ask our media ministry if they would look in the archives for a special uh, video recording of, of Handel's Messiah, the conclusion of that Christmas portion, which was really an annual event here for many years. And the Sanctuary Choir would present Messiah I think almost every December is one of the big Sunday morning parts of the Christmas music. So they have found a wonderful tribute that we want you to hear now. And I, I hope as you see Ronald Wells conduct this and just picture Alistair there, probably on the front pew, the champion of the music ministry, and uh, just a man who loved praise and worship and great music of the church. This tribute of praise, the hallelujah, the culminating chorus of that great work. We want to share it with you now, and I, I hope that it will bring a, a smile to your face and just joy in your heart. And I hope you'll listen now 
And may God bless you. Thank you so much. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels say, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing, blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and forever. Hallelujah! For the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Today I'm going to be very personal. My reference to the men that we honor today will be personal as well. Some 60 years ago, 
I served on the staff of the First Baptist Church of Newnan, Georgia. We developed a staff relationship with a sister church, First Baptist Church of Griffin, Georgia. Two days a year, one day in Newnan, one day in Griffin, we had a day of fun, fellowship, and food. Sometimes we'd get a little business sense and share some ideas. Alistair Walker came to be pastor of the First Baptist Church of Griffin. We identified with Alistair immediately. He was like us. He was fun-loving, he was lovable, likable, and he fit into our staff so very well. Our people in Newnan, the members of the church, enjoyed Alistair. And they, too, enjoyed having him speak at different church occasions. They liked his accent. So many times they would say, where is he from? Where did he get that accent? And if I was in the group, before Alistair could give an answer, I gave an answer. He's from Springdale, Arkansas, and he learned that accent by listening to sermon tapes by Peter Marshall. Alistair loved that answer and even used it himself on occasions. But in time, Alistair left Griffin and came to Spartanburg. I left Newnan and went to a church in Alabama. Eight years after Alistair came to Spartanburg, our contact had continued and he contacted me and asked me to join the staff of this church. It was a good move for me. Alistair made staff positions enjoyable. Work was enjoyable. He made it fun. He was a perfect supervisor. Alistair expected you to work. He expected you to do your job. But he didn't stand over you, make sure that you crossed every T and dotted every I. He accepted your creative ability, and he let you do your job with confidence that you were going to do the best job possible. He was a perfect pastor and a perfect staff supervisor. If my, Alice's line to me was concerning my family, on several occasions, many occasions really, Alistair would say to me, you married over your head. While I did agree with him, I got sort of tired of being reminded of that so often. And so finally one time I told him, Alistair, you did likewise. And in the latter years, I would reply, Alistair, the only difference between the two of us is that I only married over my head one time, you married over your head two times. And to, from those of us who wondered how Alistair was going to reflect over the loss of Jenny, we complimented Lou Ann for the wonderful job she did in providing such good care and so much joy and happiness to Alistair in his later years. Every staff member of First Baptist Church had an Alistair Walker story. I had several, but this is not the time or the place to share those stories. Instead, I want to share with you a story that Alistair told, and it's a story that, to me, reflects perfectly on this person that I met some 60 years ago. When I joined uh, this church staff, the associate pastor was Dr. Gibson Davis. We called him Gibby. Gibby had served as pastor of this church in the 1940s. He left and went to Tennessee, served two churches there, retired, and moved back to Spartanburg to for to spend his retirement years. Alistair asked Gibby to join the staff 
to assist him in pastoral responsibilities. And it was a good move for, for Gibby, a better move for Alistair. Alistair told this story many, many times, and I share it with you now. Gibby and Alistair had conducted a funeral service. They were returning back to the church from the cemetery. In the car, Gibby turned to Alistair and said, Alistair, are you up to a little sinning? Alistair said, I think I can handle a sin or two. Gibby reached into his inside coat pocket and pulled out two cigars. They lighted those cigars and smoked those cigars, and that was their sinning activity for the day. When I got word that Alistair had passed away, a picture developed in my, my mind, a very vivid picture. I wish I had the artistic ability to put it on paper, but let me share with you what this picture in my mind was. It was a picture of Alistair standing at the gates of heaven. He was by himself. Hundreds of people were inside the gate and they could see Alistair and they waited for the gate doors to open so Alistair could move in. Right there at the front was Jenny, Dr. and Mrs. Walker, Alistair's parents, My Joyce was there, all waiting on Alistair to come in. Hundreds of people were there from Spartanburg, Griffin, Georgia, Knoxville, Tennessee, and the Kentucky Church, all waiting to greet Alistair. Back in the background stood Gibson Davis. Gibby was elevated, standing on a little mound. His arm was outreached like Miss Liberty. His right arm was up. But he wasn't holding a torch. He was holding two cigars. I think about that often because that story reminded me of this man that I met some 60 years ago in central Georgia. The Bible says this, written by the psalmist, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I'll never forget Alistair Walker. I'll never forget the benefits that came to me through my association with Alistair Walker. Spartanburg, serving on the staff for one of the best church staffs ever assembled in the Southern Baptist Convention, having the best job of any church staff in the Southern Baptist Convention. Those are my benefits, and I'm indebted to Alistair Walker. Alistair, I thank you, my friend. I miss you now. I'll see you again and it won't be long. And Alistair, one more thing. Ask Gibby to have three cigars when I get there. Amen.
My name's Benny Little John, and I just want you to know how honored I am to be included in this tribute to Dr. Alastair Walker. You know, he was more than a pastor. Uh, he was a spiritual father for me. I grew up there at First Baptist Church in Spartanburg, South Carolina. And so many of you have touched my life. So many have gone on to be with the Lord. 
but I'm so grateful that I have just an opportunity to speak for just a moment and tell you what Alastair Walker means to Benny Littlejohn. When he came there, he caught my attention. I started listening to the pastor preach. And then it was the last Sunday of October in 1968. That's right. I walked down that aisle there at First Baptist Church and took Dr. Walker's hand and I said, you know, Pastor, I don't know what God's calling me to do, but I know he's calling me into ministry. And so here I am, soon, uh, soon to be 53 years, and still doing it, serving as an interim pastor now. It's hard to believe I've retired. But there's one thing that I'll always remember. Dr. Walker always gave me time. When I was in high school, I would come by the office there. Ruth Littlefield was the secretary, one of the secretaries, and I would go up to see Dr. Walker, and I'd say, I'm preaching this Sunday in a youth revival. And he'd come to a room somewhere in the church, and he'd sit there and listen to me preach my sermon. I was only 16, 17 years old, but he took the time. Out of that, over the years, I'm just so grateful that uh, Dr. Walker and I stayed to be friends. I would say that we were very good friends because when I came back to South Carolina to pastor the Southside Baptist Church there in downtown Spartanburg, he and I would get together for lunch almost once a week. We would uh, enjoy lunch together. We'd talk about our churches. We'd talk about members we'd like to swap one with the other. You understand what I mean? But we always had a wonderful time, and we could share our hearts. And then when I left uh, Spartanburg, went to Birmingham, Alabama, I called Dr. Walker every week. Every week I called. Oh, okay, I may have missed one or two weeks, but I called him every week because I needed, I wanted to hear his, his voice. I needed his input. I would ask him questions. I, I would ask him about how to deal with situations, how to handle situations in the church. And he always had an answer for me. And then when I came back to South Carolina, to Greenville, South Carolina, and uh, this is where I retired here in uh, Greenville, South Carolina in 2017, while I was pastoring the Eastern Church in Greenville, I don't know how many times I'd call him on Saturday night and say, now, now Pastor, Dr. Walker, do, do you remember that story you told and I would give a little bit of the story and he would fill it in. Or maybe it was a joke. Remember some of his dumb jokes? <laughs> but they were funny. And I would say, what was the catch line? What was the punch line to it? He'd always come through, you know. And it was just always a joy to hear from him. There were times that I'd ask him, I'd say, listen, I'm preaching on this verse. And he would always say, well, don't forget to say, don't forget to add this. He was always an encourager always an encourager. And I, I want you to know that that man, Dr. Alistair Walker, made me who I am today. You know, he, he always said to me in the, in the, oh, I guess the last 10, 15 years, Benny, call me Alistair. And I said, Dr. Walker, for me to call you Alistair is like me calling my daddy Wallace. I can't do it. There's just too much respect. And so it is with that caliber of respect, I say to Dr. Alistair Walker and his family and friends, I love the man, I love you, and I thank you for allowing me to invest my life in him because he has filled me full. I miss him so much every day. Thanks for listening. God bless you all. Dr. Alistair Walker. Wow, what can I say? January 1985, on a cold winter night, I met Dr. Walker and Miss Jenny in Atlanta, Georgia for the first time. And out of that visit and over the next month, uh, he invited me to join his staff here at First Baptist Spartanburg as minister to students. And what a joy it has been to serve as a minister of students for eight years. And then God called us away and then had the privilege of coming back. And I've been back here with Dr. Wilton for 19 years. 
So 26 years that I've served on this great staff and it all started with that cold night in Atlanta, Georgia and how grateful I will forever be for that visit and for that invitation. As I came here, Dr. Walker, his, uh, uh, his, his uh, encouragement to me was, Sam, I want to disciple these young people. I don't want it just to be fun and games. I want discipleship. And that was where my ministry had begun to grow um, in my previous ministry. And so when we came here, I, that's exactly what I did. I began to build a ministry around discipleship. And over those seven and a half years, God really blessed and discipled so many teenagers. But it was Dr. Walker's encouragement uh, to us. Many of us, several of us, uh, Kaz and Britt and myself, considered we went through the seminary of Alistair Walker, the Walker Seminary, because we learned so much. We didn't have the we didn't have that formal training in seminary. We just had our college degree and then some other studies. But we often refer to the Walker Seminary. And that's exactly what it was for me. Um, it was such a time of learning, such a time of, of being able to express myself in my ministry. And what the, the, the love that Dr. Walker and Miss Walker gave to Jimmy, Jimmy and me and our children, Ginger and Jordan, be forever grateful. Lots of fun stories, lots of fun stories. Uh, sitting in my office one day, which at that time was just around the corner from him, and uh, he came over and he says, have you got 15 minutes to go somewhere with me? And I, of course, my answer was yes, and we headed out to Gaffney. <laughs> I headed out to Gaffney, and we went to Hamrick's, and he went about looking for suits. And uh, it was not about looking for suits. It was spending time with someone that I love so much that loved me and uh, wanted to pour his life into me uh, during that time. Uh, one of the fun things that happened on that day was people obviously recognized Dr. Walker from, from television. And of course, they spotted him. and. Uh, so they would move one way to try to get close to him and have a word with him. He was, he was aware of it. Well, when they moved that way, he'd move back towards me and, and we just had lots, lots of fun. But on and on, there are stories that any of us can tell. Of fun. But that was one of my first fun things that I remember Dr. Walker doing with me. And then there's stories of him being out on Asheville Highway in his car his transmission going out, but rather than calling a tow truck, he just backed that car all the way back to the First Baptist, and uh, on and on we could go with stories. But Dr. Walker, what a what a what a man of God, what a godly friend, and what a godly mentor he was to me. My last visit with him was still the same. Sam, disciple people as you come in contact. Keep pouring your life into young people. That's what he always told me, but he was not talking about students so much then as he was talking about young ministers. And I will forever do that because he set the pace for that in my, in my life. So um, the years that I spent with Dr. Wilton, uh, Dr. Walker, sorry, uh, will forever shape my life, shape my ministry, impact my life, impact my family, and have set my children, helped set my children on a path of godly living and discipleship. So Dr. Walker, to Miss Walker, Miss Lou Ann, and to all the family, thank you for sharing Dr. Walker with me. Dr. Alistair C. Walker. The way that we met was through something as uh, crazy as this ball. Uh, the Lord called me to be on staff here at First Baptist in Spartanburg in 1986, and that's where it all began. But I want to take you to the very last time that I spoke with Dr. Alistair C. Walker. Uh, I'll never forget uh, all the things that he taught me, 
But uh, one of the many things that he taught me over the years was, uh, you know, how to visit a hospital. And he always talked about the fact that the most important thing to do is to be uh, very gracious and be very kind. And, uh, but when you go in, be very brief and to go in and pray and love on the family and then leave. And so I was trying to remember all these things as I walked into the hospital where Dr. Walker was, and honestly, I didn't know if it was going to be the last time that I saw him or not. Um, he was very ill, and the word was that he was very close to the time when he was going to go be with the Lord. And when I walked in, all I could do was uh, think about all the times that we had had together, and emotion completely came over me, and I went straight over to his bedside, and I just hugged him, and I did not want to let go. And he hugged me, and I hugged him, and he hugged me, and I hugged him. And then when I finally separated and looked up at him, Dr. Walker looked at me right in the eye, and he said, Kaz, I'm contagious. <laughs> I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't even gather myself at that moment to think of the fact that he thought he was so contagious that I wasn't going to get a hug from him. I didn't even know what that meant. But uh, I knew that it was time for me to love on the family and to pray for him. And immediately he asked me how my family is doing. And before I could finish, he said, let me pray for you. He prayed for my family, patted me on the back and sent me out the door. And I remember standing outside the door thinking that was not the way that I had envisioned this visit going. He, on his deathbed, ministered to me. Well, to, to finish out that story of 1986, one of the things that he said to me when he came to me was, Kaz, I know nothing about sports and recreation, so produce or pack. <laughs> that was the first lesson that I learned from my incredible mentor and pastor and friend. But, uh, you know, it was interesting as years went by, he didn't just leave it to me. Uh, he taught me everything there was to know um, about ministering to people, whether it was at a funeral, whether it was at a wedding, whether it was at the birth of a child, whether it was a difficult moment in a hospital, but even the little things that some may not think about. He came to me many times and patted me on the shoulder and grabbed the lock of hair back of my head and said, Kaz, looks like tomorrow's a good day for a haircut. And uh, I knew what that meant, and I would go take care of that immediately. And uh, he would even talk to me about the importance of a white T-shirt underneath my shirt. He even called me one time on the phone. I'm in the office, I'm working, and he said, Kaz, I'm going shopping for suits. I'd like for you to go with me. And I thought, wow, what an honor. And I hung up the phone, I was getting ready to go, and the phone rang back and he said, Kaz, bring your checkbook, we're shopping for you. <laughs> uh, he knew uh, where my weaknesses were and was quick to pour those into me. Well, I can remember not shortly after that, uh, not too long after that, um, I had finished my degree at the University of Georgia and I enjoyed my time. Uh, and really, at a very emotional moment, walked into his office and told Dr. Walker that I was resigning and I was going to leave to go to Texas to go to seminary. And he said, Kaz, why would you want to go to seminary? And I said, well, because I want to be a minister of recreation. And he said, Kaz, you are a minister of recreation. <laughs> and I said, I know, but um, I want that education that you know is so vitally important to doing ministry. And he told me that if I were to stay and not go, that he would pour into me over the next several years everything that I could possibly learn at seminary and even more. And you know, he fulfilled that commitment for the next several years. As long as he served here and I had the joy of serving under him, he would invite me to his house. He would fix sandwiches for me and pour into me. He would take me with him to hospitals. He would take me with him to, a, to do a funeral. He'd take me and show me the way to do baptisms and to do weddings. He taught me one thing after another, after another, after another. But ultimately, in the end, there were three things that I'll never, ever forget as I watched Dr. Walker and the way that he ministered 
in every situation, even when he ministered to young children that had come to play with something as simple as a ball. He would find that moment to share with them and their families how to ask Jesus to come into their heart. And the number one thing that he would always share with them is whatever you do, confess it all. Confess it all. There's nothing that you can hide from God. There's nothing that you can hide from Jesus. If you're going to ask him to come into your life, confess it all. The second thing that he really poured into me when I was battling with difficult decisions, he would say, Kaz, surrender it all. Surrender everything that you have to him. Don't try to hold anything back. There's nothing at all that you can do to stay outside of God's will. You want to be in his will at everything. Surrender it all. It was actually uh, the final words that he shared with me as point number three. Dr. Walker and I had shared some, some very uh, challenging times and he had poured into me in a very difficult part, in a difficult time in my life. And the words that he said to me were, Kaz, just give it all to Jesus. Confess it all, surrender it all, and give it all to Jesus. All you have, all you are, all you've ever been, and all you will ever be. Give it all to Jesus. Kaz, I'm contagious. I remember walking out of that hospital room, and I said, Dear Lord Jesus, I certainly hope so, because I want what that man has. I hope that his contagiousness touched you as much as it did me. God bless you. I was blessed to be out married to Alistair for 18 years. And I th I'm thankful for that. I'm very thankful for that. I would like to share with you some happy thoughts and cherished memories that we had along the way. Booming voice and the happy laughter that you heard in the halls of First Baptist Church were the same at home. He was the same at home as he was here. He enjoyed life and he had nothing gave him more pleasure than to invite his family and his friends and even strangers into his home. They weren't strangers very long because he would always invite them in and start the conversation by asking them where they attended church. He would break the ice this way, and it was a good opening line. There's something about a stranger that they became a friend. One day, after talking with Alistair, they became his friend. And he would, he, he enjoyed life. He was kind, he was tender, he was a friend with a good sense of humor. He loved life. There were many times when people would talk with him about baptiz baptism and baptizing them. And he would say, and I should have held you down longer. I was fortunate to be with him for nine of the 23 interims that he did after retiring from First Baptist Church. Nothing gave us greater pleasure than to serve the Lord together, and I enjoyed every minute of it. We had many happy times together, and the happy, one of the happiest memories of my life was serving the Lord with Alistair Walker. There were happy times and a few laughs along the way. I wanted to share a funny memory that I have as, a past, as the pastor's wife. At one of the interims where he was serving, the minister of music came to me one Sunday morning and asked if I would play the closing hymn, him, because his, the pianist there had to leave early. I 
usually made it practice to sit with one of the Sunday school teachers she, who came along. And that morning I left my purse beside me on the, on the pew where I was sitting beside her. And what I didn't realize was that we were having a business meeting after church that Sunday. So my phone rang, it rang and here I am over at the piano and here the lady is sitting, the Sunday school teacher is sitting beside my ring and purse, my ring and phone, which is in my pocketbook. So she uh, looked down at my purse as though she hoped nobody would think that was her purse. And sure enough, it rang not only once, but twice. And so in a little bit, my phone rang again. And she slid down the pew so nobody would think that pur that purse and that ringing phone belonged to her at all. <laughs> And I'm thankful that Alistair was my, being my best friend and friend, my husband. He was he denied that his wife was, was responsible for interrupting the, the the business meeting that morning. I miss Alistair. I miss him very much. I miss him since he has gone to be with the Lord. And not a day has passed since he went to heaven to be with the Lord that I haven't gotten up every day and wondered what he was doing in heaven that day. Since there would be no need for him to preach to the saints there, I decided that the Lord has him in the choir singing. He had a beautiful tenor voice, and he was a wonderful soloist. He used to say that when he, he himself said this about himself, <laughs> he, he always said that he would follow his sermon, a lousy sermon, when he preached a lousy sermon, he would follow it with a solo in hopes of redeeming himself, which he did. These are a few of the beautiful memories that I have of life with Alistair Walker and I I'm thankful for these cherished memories. Countless are the moments that I've had with Alastair Cameron Walker. Pastor, yes. Preacher, yes. Mentor, yes. Leader, yes. Founder, yes. And yes, even a singer. But what will reach beyond the external accolades of a man's life? What is man that God is mindful of him? That God should even consider that which is a little lower than the angels? For some reason, God does consider, even uniquely, to the point of preparing works in advance for a particular man to step into. Papa. A distinguished, ruddy sage who carried a roaring laugh in a Scottish brogue. This sage sat across the dinner table from a young king who was just beginning to understand his calling. Even still, the king was seeking wisdom he'd not yet attained. So the sage gazed into the young king's eyes and began to ask a series of questions. What is the path ahead? Who are the people you will lead? How will you continue to prepare? And how will you hold on to that which is most precious and not forsake it? As the words of those questions rolled into the heart of the king like weighted boulders of responsibility, he knew he had much to consider. And he also knew the sage had walked the path before him. The king did not know the answers to the questions asked. Thus, the awkward silence of unanswered questions transformed into boisterous laughter from the two of them. As the cadence of cheerful sound between the two of them lifted, it was almost identical. And for good reason, the sage was the grandfather of the young king, and he loved him deeply. As the prepared meal arrived at their table, 
They gave thanks. Quickly, the king asked the last question to the sage. How did you hold on to that which was most precious and not forsake it? In typical fashion, the sage began to talk as the king began to eat, listening intently and filling his belly. But there was a pause, which prompted the king to look up from his almost empty plate. And as their eyes met, there was tender compassion in the sage's eyes. And he looked up at the king and said, Choose your family over fame. Choose significance over prominence. Even in Christendom and in the name of good things, we can be blinded by the ambition of ministry. That which is most precious is to live loved by God. To not be just in the Jesus business, but rather be devoted to the word, works, and ways of Christ and demonstrate this to those around you. Papa. Papa wanted more than anything for his family to know he loved them deeply. The grandfather, the father, the husband, these were the roles I saw him in the most. There was honesty and boldness, grit, passion, sacrifice, pain, loss, fulfillment, joy, tragedy, and triumph. Papa loved and lived committed to Jesus Christ and ran his race well, unhindered. I truly believe you don't measure a man's life one moment or one year at a time. You measure it on whether they finished well. And Papa finished well. He finished loving his family well, loving his wife well. Even in those last days of his life, floating in the thin space between heaven and earth with a frail frame, shortened breath, and eyes closed, the countenance of his spirit defied death because Jesus Christ alone was his cornerstone. What was once a dim, darkened image is now the preeminent, transfigured Christ who Papa is with face to face in all his glory. So, the legacy of a man, of this man in Christ, is to walk along the haunted path of the Holy Ghost and finish the winding journey with more dependence upon grace than which he started. Shine bright upon your face And the miles that stand between The future and the day Remember that my love for you remains I carry your heart with me I carry
that you have left Remember every promise that I've kept And I carry your heart with me I carry it in my heart Wherever the road may lead May heaven be where you are Your doubts never drown out your wonder May you keep your innocence When it feels the whole world is on your shoulders Darling, don't you dare forget Carry it in my heart Wherever the road may lead May heaven be where you are May heaven be where you are Alistair Cameron Walker, the 14th pastor of First Baptist Church, Spartanburg, South Carolina, a powerful example of a life completely surrendered to serving God. Dr. Walker was born in Paisley, Scotland and grew up in South Africa where his father was pastor of Johannesburg Baptist Church. When Alistair was saved at age 16, he felt a definitive call to the gospel ministry. Coming to America in 1946, he began working his way through school as a trolley car driver, ultimately earning degrees from Baylor University, Northern Baptist Theological Seminary and Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. He was also later awarded two honorary Doctor of Divinity degrees from the Baptist College of Charleston and Furman University. In addition to his powerful biblical-centric pulpit ministry, some of Dr. Walker's unique attributes as a pastor were his ability to develop a strong staff, adding ministers and ministries from recreation to helping centers to singles, all driven to reach people for Christ. Dr. Walker inherited a growing TV ministry, but during his leadership, a long-term relationship with WSBA took root, and the audience grew from 30,000 to over 75,000 viewers each Sunday. Dr. Walker helped to create a fertile soil that under Dr. Wilton's ministry, birthed the national ministry, the encouraging word we have now, with salvations taking place every single day. Now, the beacon represented worship innovation, a passion of Dr. Walker and his minister of music, Ron Wells, carrying worship outdoors to the beacon drive-in every Sunday night in August for over 15 years. This grew to include Easter sunrise services, literally feeding 5,000 free breakfasts and 4th of July celebrations with over 10,000 in attendance. Thousands of lives were changed, taking ministry to those who would never enter our church. Dr. Walker came to us from a pastorate in Middlesboro, Kentucky, and brought with him a love for the people of the coal mining community deep in the hollers of Kentucky. It was out of that love that Kentucky Missions was born in 1969 and continues to thrive today. Jesus, help us carry you. Alive in us, your light shines through. With every act of love, we bring the kingdom. Come. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Your act of love brought me. 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 Brought me to Jesus. Brought me to Jesus. Brought me to Jesus. Dr. Walker's passion for missions was not limited to the U.S., but across the globe as well. I've come back from the Soviet Union, and I've come back with a greater desire to exalt the Lord Jesus Christ, to exalt His Word. And we're glad to have you as part of our television audience. And we pray that our service today is going to be a great blessing in your heart. While serving as president of the South Carolina Baptist Convention, Dr. Walker initiated a project called Rice Bowls, distributing plastic rice bowls to aid in the World Hunger Missions Project. And it continues as an effective tool for many hunger agencies today. During Dr. Walker's pastorate, membership increased to over 4,000 members and Sunday school attendance increased to over 1,400. During these years, the total gifts to the church also climbed from $470,000 in 1968 a year to well over $1.6 million by his retirement. The properties and buildings of First Baptist grew as well. Elements like the Building for Tomorrow campaign and other property acquisitions helped the church be more effective here in the heart of the city. But First Baptist buildings and church growth were secondary as Dr. Walker lived out his commitment to Jesus first and his family second. He and Jenny, and after she went to be with Jesus, he and Lou Ann continue to share his family with our faith family, and our lives have never been the same. After a vibrant ministry of 25 years at FBS, Dr. Walker retired from the ministry and served in interim pastor positions in the upstate of South Carolina. Dr. Walker and Dr. Wilton have developed a close, mentor-like friendship that continues to this day. And years into his own ministry, Dr. Wilton asked Dr. Walker to return and serve First Baptist as Pastor Emeritus. And Dr. Walker joyfully continues to hold that position to this day. The voice of Dr. Alistair Walker has resonated through the halls of First Baptist Church in the community of Spartanburg and beyond with powerful biblical preaching for years. But that's not the only thing he did with his voice.